Hey everybody, it's uh, Brian and Gadget. Uh, we're here on stage at the, uh, the yeah, man, I guess after the event, uh, Joe Swanberg, uh, director. Um, you were sitting over there a moment ago. Uh, pretty good company, right? Ab absolutely. Pretty, uh, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty big heroes of mine. Yeah. So uh, that was cool. So, so <laughs> we, we had uh, we had Wes Craven where I'm sitting right now, uh, Richard Linklater, and you on the end. I mean, did you did you see this coming? <laughs> no, I was actually, yeah, I was I was happy to, to get yeah. involved. Yeah, called me and and shown me around the site and uh, and yeah. So I mean, as soon as I heard Wes and and Linklater, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll be happy to be there. Well, well, let's 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 start with the, the site specifically. I mean, you know, you're obviously a film nerd. Most directors are when they started. So this is a this is kind of one of those like. I wish I had had that back, back whenever. Well, definitely. I think, uh, yeah, I was saying, while we were talking, I was sort of saying that when, you, when you're a kid and, or whenever, what, at any point in your life when you get interested in movies and you start thinking about movies as something you want to do, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, very specifically a mystique built around films because uh, there are these constructs that are supposed to look effortlessly like a representation of the real world, at least some of them. I know that there's sci-fi and genre films that aren't, but uh, in general, the whole process of making movies is about hiding the behind the scenes, uh, and and as a filmmaker, you, that's what you want to know about, is the behind the scenes. That's what you're actually curious about. If you want to be a director, you want to know what a director does. Uh, you know, I remember... Uh, being a kid and sort of watching movies and not, you know, understanding that there was a role called the director, uh, but not really having a sense of how the director is actually involved yeah. in in why the movie that I see is the way that it is. I always imagine just that bolt of the camera or something yeah, like that, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah. yeah, you can't you can't quite picture it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like w when DVDs started coming out, there was things like director's commentary and uh, and you. You know, it sort of like uh, opened the curtains a little bit so that you can kind of uh, look behind the scenes. And I think that uh, for me, where I see the potential of, of yeah, being this, uh, uh, even broadening the scope of understanding of a lot of these movies, and especially of a lot of classic movies that we already know a lot about, uh, presenting new information is really exciting. You know, uh, certain stories trickle out there about something like A Nightmare on Elm Street, where, you know, like, I feel like everybody has some general knowledge about the movie, but you know, having a having a chance to kind of like look a little deeper than that, and uh, and especially just the the sort of hand selected uh, curatorial aspect is important as like finding things on the internet has become increasingly difficult, uh, and like everything being always available. Uh, you know, just like uh, when I go to restaurants now, uh, you know, I don't want to sit down at a restaurant and have a 14-page menu to look sure. through, you know, sure. and, and see that yeah. the restaurant makes every single food possible. Uh, it's actually nice these days when I sit down and there's like, you know, eight options for what I'm going to eat. And then I know that all of them are well made. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Odds are when it's a 14 page menu, they probably don't do that many yeah, things exactly, that well. Exactly. Right? exactly. So uh, it seems like. It seems like it's the same approach yeah. towards films. Selecting films that uh, are, are classics that that sort of already stood a certain test of time, and then uh, trying to do a really good job uh, enlightening that process. I wonder if you, you, you feel like your your own movies, the most recent ones, sort of excluded from that, but the ones you traditionally made are um, that are, are now or at some point will be that kind of. Inaccessibility, you know, because obviously when we're talking about like a thirty, one hundred million dollar film, it's yeah. easy to see why that could kind of be impenetrable. Do you yeah, think? Yeah. Do you think you could form a similar mystique around a you know super low budget movie? Well, I think so. I think that I think that uh, it, I mean it's always a mystery how things exactly gel. Um, so yeah, with my earlier films, there's no uh, there's no real. Uh, Surprises to unveil. I think about the production side of things. I think it's pretty clear that they were made by a small group of people, yeah. uh, sort of working together in, in you know real locations and things like that. But then I think the conversation shifts to 
uh, emotional questions and, and deeper process questions. So I think with every movie, there's a, there's a world to explore behind the scenes. It just maybe shifts uh, from something like Nightmare on Elm Street, shifts from maybe um, interesting technical questions about how they do the special effects yeah. to like smaller questions about like what did you guys talk about before you shot that scene? How did you uh, work with the actors before they got to town uh, to make the film? Where did the idea of the film come from? Like these are all uh, these are sort of universal movie questions. On 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 a, on a technical aspect, I'm wondering how um, you know it's it, it's clear how low budget and how the technology itself affects the filmmaking process. Yeah. The ability to shoot something on like an SLR or yeah. something versus having all these cameras. It, you know, it's clear how that affects the, how it affects the look, how it affects the budget. I'm wondering if um, you know, in your relatively recent filmmaker as compared to these guys, do you think that do you think the technology affects the storytelling too? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think, uh, you know, as cameras have gotten smaller and more mobile, the way we document our own lives has changed a lot. And I think that that inherently uh, affects the way we tell stories. It affects the platforms that we choose to tell stories on, too. You know, like, uh, posting snippets of your life on YouTube is a very different way to tell a story yeah. than, than, for instance, deciding to write a, a biography uh, once you reach the end of your life, you know, like the, I, I think that we're kind of self-documenting now all the time in a really new way. Almost, you know, the way that people keep diaries, we're now doing that with, with photos and videos uh, and with words on, you know, posting tweets and Facebook status updates and stuff. These things, to me, uh, all all read and look like little soap operas, you know. Except instead of uh, thirty-minute episodes, you're sort of allowed, uh, you know five and ten second peaks into somebody's personal soap opera uh, all day long. So, I, you know, I think uh, inherently storytelling has to be affected by yeah. technology. And, and your your new movie, which you uh, debuted here, um, again, I mean, everybody's sort of pitching it as your, your, no, your big, your yeah, big yeah. movie. Um, and I'm wondering if that was something that you feel like you've been working up towards. Are you going to keep doing that? Um, are you still interested in these other forms of storytelling? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, Drinking Buddies came about in a really natural way. There was no... Uh, I wasn't conspiring to make a big movie or a bigger movie. Uh, there were certain actors that I wanted to work with and a certain story that I wanted to tell, and it became apparent very, very early on that we needed more money to do that. Um, so finding that money and putting that movie together happened in, in, a, in a very quick, uh, you know, pretty normal way, and, and, and getting the actors involved in making the film happened in, in the same way that my films always have, so, uh, but yeah, I loved it, you know, I, I, I love having, uh, having some resources to tell the story, I love, you know, collaboration is sort of what makes films exciting to me in the first place, uh, shifting what's typically been a collaboration just with actors into a collaboration with uh, an art department and uh, wardrobe department and location managers and all these other people that are part of a, a bigger film team it was uh, really yeah. fun. D does it feel, in a way, does it feel like more of an accomplishment? Because obviously, you know, you're, you're, these movies you watch growing up, it's more akin to those, right? Yeah, yeah. Does it feel like you realize what you want to do a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, with each with each movie, you have things that you're hoping to achieve, uh, and and you can sort of set those goals higher or lower depending on on the project. And uh, you know, fully realizing the thing you set out to achieve, I think, is always the goal, no matter what uh, what size the movie is. And, yeah, I, I worked really hard on Drinking Buddies. I'm really proud of it. I feel like uh, it is the, the movie that I hoped I could make, and um, and so it's it's just you know as rewarding as it ever is to, to make a project and, and find that you end up in that place where you where you sort of achieve some of those goals that you set out for yourself. But uh, you know, no no movie makes sense without the audience component of that. So now at this stage. Uh, I'm, that's what I'm excited about and hoping for is to now share this with you. Uh, I can be proud of it all I want, and that's that's uh, nice for me. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. People can't see it, then uh, it's it's kind of uh, you know just sitting there.
you know, making art pieces just for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you can help it. They're literally ripping us up around us, so we can we can close on this. Um, again, you know, we're talking about moving toward, towards larger budgets, and I'm, I'm wondering if I'm wondering if the, the internet uh, as sort of a storytelling platform is something that interests you. Always has, yeah. I mean, my my second film, LOL. Uh, which I shot in 2005 and came out in 2006 is all, you know, it's about these three guys that are obsessed with technology and the way that that, you know, their cell phones and laptops and things like that uh, help and hinder their connections with their girlfriends, with other people in their lives. I mean, I'm, I'm immersed in it. I'm part of the sort of the first wave. Yeah. I'm 31 now, so uh, I really started having internet access in high school. And then especially when I went to college and there was Ethernet connections and fast internet, like, you know, I, I uh, sort of am, am one of the first waves to, to have lived, you know, quite a bit of my life without this stuff, and then, but also to be young enough to have really uh, been immersed in it. And to not remember a time when it didn't exist. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah, I still remember that old time, but also uh, I was young enough to really be in it. So. Uh, yeah, it's hugely, hugely important in my life and, and in my thought process as an artist. And uh, I've always wanted to make films about what's going on and, and what's happening to, to me and, and the people around me. So uh, technology and the internet have, have been a big part of that. And will continue to be a big part of that. Um, if people aren't here at South by, how can they watch a movie? Uh, I don't know yet. Okay. Uh, You're working on yeah, I, right I, okay. I suspect that Drinking Buddies will uh, show up at some more film festivals yeah. this year. I also, uh, it, it looks fairly certain that we'll find a, a good distributor and and uh, hopefully people can come see it on the big screen or, or on VOD or whatever they yeah. choose. Well, well, yeah, I mean, it seems like we're getting to a point where we're in it and it's perfectly viable every time we release the platform. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it definitely is. It's just uh, the, the internet uh, in and of itself is just a, a means of, yeah. of distributing information. And movies are definitely information. So, uh, yeah, and, and, you know, growing up in the, with VHS and, and then DVD and uh, being able to go to a video store and, and rent movies, you know, I saw a lot of the masterworks of cinema for the first time on a TV set yeah. via yeah. home video. So I'm not afraid of people experiencing a movie in that way. And the ones that I really loved, uh, you know, I've gone back and seen in the movie theater uh, as in repertory programming. And uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think it's ever, uh, I don't think it's ever, uh, it's, I don't think it's impossible to really connect with something. I will say, however, it's a good story as you go I will say, however, as a viewer, uh, I pre still prefer to see movies in a, in a movie theater. Sure. That's the way I want to see them. And, uh, you know, I would almost be uh, uh, still formulating this thought, so maybe I'm hesitant to say it definitively. Uh, but I would say that in 99% of the cases, if you're watching a brand new film, the best first way to see it is in a movie theater. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, these other platforms uh, just allow you access uh, to the movies. They provide new ways in and a chance to re-experience that. And, you know, I've certainly made movies where I feel like sitting there at your laptop with headphones in, uh, watching that movie is actually a really interesting experience that's, that's diff very different than the theatrical and, and the uh, ballot. So, so good. Yeah, good. Good, good. Just cut, give me the cut off. We're cut off. We're cut off. Oh yeah, they're literally ripping it down. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>